to the uh, recent debate with uh, Vosh and uh, that trans debate on? I'm halfway through it. I'm halfway through it. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I want. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, go on. Uh, so I, I, I briefly watched it and um, I want to go through it again just to. Because um, it, it, it was a kind of. Um, it's something you need to kind of listen to carefully before you can come to arrive at a conclusion. But I thought that the Christian guy on the other side, the one who was arguing against trans uh, rights, uh, the PhD guy, he, he, he put up some... It, like, his arguments against Vosch were pertinent because Vosch seemed to be using like a circular uh, definition of what it means to be a female. What, what do you think? I think that this is a trick that um, a lot of people play against trans rights, okay? And here's the simple trick, okay? They try to change the discussion, okay? We're trying to say, why can't trans women just be women, okay? Why can't we just call them women, okay? They change, all of a sudden, ignore the discussion, and they're like, is there a good definition for the word woman, okay? If you want to fight that fight, and they're saying there is no good definition for the word woman, and you want to argue that there is a good definition for the word woman, well, they win. But that is not the fight, okay? So it's a very, it's a very good because you think that as a person who says trans woman should be, be able to be called woman or should be considered woman, okay? They, you think that that means that you should have a good definition for the word woman. And because you already assume that, when they say like, okay, there is no good definition for the word woman, they are taking you out of one battlefield and moving you to a battlefield that they can win. You, you were in the battlefield that you could win, and they know that that's a losing battlefield because you're talking about people's rights and stuff. And they're moving you to a battlefield field where they have the upper hand but you think you have wrongly assumed that you should be able to also win this battlefield to be able to win the other one. And that's a trick that I noticed they do. But the thing is that I could just give them that. It's so easy. Here's the thing. What's the meaning of woman? I'm going to say there's no good definition. Like, oh, this definition is inconsistent. This definition doesn't make it clear. This definition doesn't have good lines. I'm like, yeah, they are all crappy definitions. And we don't have a good word definition. There, yeah, there is... There has never, there has, there's no word. There's no good word. This, this doesn't clarify anything. But, but, but I guess, sorry. sorry. Yeah. No, but I'm saying we use so many other words that are, that we have utility without a very clear and useful, uh, written, uh, there are useful, okay, sorry. There are useful definitions, but there are not very good definitions. Here's the thing. We're not, when we're talking about words, uh, we use words to our day-to-day -day life, we don't have as this, strict guideline for what those definitions are as we as we do in a scientific community you know what I mean? so for example when you're writing a legal document or you're writing a scientific document the definitions of words that you use there need to be very clear about where the lines are what's in that category what's outside of that category what it's referring to okay uh but what i say like when i say hey Eben Kaim, he's like he's he's an awesome dude okay he's so awesome right I like I like him. He's such a good. He's such a great guy. Okay, I like well, Armin. What is the definition of awesome? What is the what is the definition? I like who exactly falls? What are the criteria? What are the exact criteria for somebody to fall within the definition of awesome? And the exact criteria where you fall out of it? Like. I don't know. I've, I've never thought about it. I don't get like, well, but this definition contradicts how you use it over there. And this definition contradicts with your earlier definition because this definition is of kind I don't care. It, okay. Yeah, fine. We don't have a good definition. But does that mean that the word awesome doesn't have utility? Should we stop using the word awesome on each other? Like you are, you are, you should not be able to call people awesome unless you have a very accurate self uh, uh, that is a definition of the word awesome that is not self contradictory. Like no, the word has utility. Okay, I'm not writing an academic paper when I'm telling when I'm talking about Ibn Qayyam. Okay, being awesome. Okay, I'm just I'm just noticing that this has utility in our day to day life, and I think we should be able to use it. And I think people should be able to call themselves. I, I can say I'm awesome. Okay, even though I don't know exactly have a definition for it. Okay. 
So the word woman right now is a social, it's just like a loose definition of something that we would like to call woman. Okay. That's what it is. The thing woman is what the things that we want to call woman. That's what woman is. Okay. Right. No, and, yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree with your perspective on that. Um, and that, I think that's something that um, Vosch was trying to argue in the debate as well. Um, now, what the, it's, like, I think you've answered this question, um, what your definition would, you know, in terms of um, woman, what would your definition be? But I think you've just answered that right now, haven't you? Um, as to no, but, what it would be. but that's not a good definition. But I'm admitting that that's not a good definition because it's a, it's a definition that is self-referring to itself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think that was the argument the other guy was trying to make. He, I think he thinks he has a strong or a stronger definition of what a woman is. And he's saying that because but, Vosch's definition is self-referential, that that's a weaker uh, definition. Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah. I admit that. I will admit that. But Because people think if you um, – people f um, think that if you have a weak definition, therefore it has no utility, okay? But why can't we just give them that? When people say that you don't have a good definition for women and your definition is not a good definition because no good definition is self-referential, why can't we be like, yeah, I agree. It's not a good definition. We don't have a good definition. And your point being, so I think his argument is that his definition is a strong definition of what a woman is, whereas mm -hmm. ours is weak. So he's saying mine is stronger. We should use my definition because it's a stronger definition of what woman is, whereas our definition is a, is a far weaker definition because it's self-referential, like you mentioned. Um, and therefore, we should use his definition of what a woman is, which is someone who is an adult female, essentially. That, that, that's what he, he was trying to claim. Okay. I don't know what, he, uh, what his claim exactly is, but my advice to people is to just give, give that to them and then say, so what? And then watch them just look at you shocked. Okay. But, but like, then they would argue. Sorry, you you finish. You finish. Sorry. No, I'm just saying like, it's like hey, you're a woman. You you don't have you're you using the word woman, but your definition of woman is not a very good definition. I'm like, yeah, it's not. Okay, and it's not a good definition. It has utility. But, I don't need a good definition. And then see, then, then what are you gonna go from there? Because then they would argue that because their definition is stronger, they can promote their definition better than we can, and therefore trans women would not, would not be classed as women under their definition. No, no, the utility of words is not dependent on solid definitions. You know what I mean? Like the word awesome, for example, um, has utility, okay? Okay, so for example, there are some in academia, all right, or in legal in a legal uh, framework, a strong uh, definition is required, okay? But for they, for our communication, for social interactions, so, a strong, very consistent definition is not required for for words to have utilities. I for, think, for, for, yeah, I think uh, Blair White uh, had a really good analogy. Uh, she said if she's in a... Um, waiting in a restaurant and someone was looking for her, that someone would say, oh, I'm looking for that girl in an orange shirt. And they don't need to go into the definition of a trans woman or what a woman is. They're just using the word woman for its descriptive purposes. That, oh, it's that woman over there in the orange shirt. You don't have to go into all of that um, technical jargon and medical history to talk about what a woman is to validate someone's experience. She was talking about this in context with um, Ben Shapiro. Yeah, I mean, okay, for example, even orange, okay? Scientifically, we have definitions maybe, for, I mean, we don't have an, we don't, I mean, scientifically, we have names for every single wavelength, okay? But, um, but when it comes to social interactions, what is orange? When does orange stop and yellow begin, right? We don't have a very strict definition for it, but still we use the word orange. Armin, there is, I'm not sure if you know this, but there is a, the, the scientific definition of a tomato is a fruit. And the legal definition of a tomato is a, veg, is a vegetable because uh, they wanted, tomato farmers wanted to avoid fruit ta tariffs or something. Oh, interesting. See, 
So definitions could even be different, like um, from one. I mean, race, we don't have like different races. We don't have strict definitions for them. They're completely arbitrary and made up, and they don't even refer to anything that is cons scientifically consistent. But we yeah, still I mean, refer I, to I, different races. Yeah, I, I agree with you on this, right? But in terms of, would you say that anyone who uh, calls themselves a woman, would you, would you consider them as a woman? Um, yeah, why not? I mean, so there's say, no cost to me. So, for example, if, if you were to call yourself a woman, mm -hmm. uh, also, so, so let's say, I, I mean, I, if, I, if I was to I call myself a woman, would you consider me a woman? I, I know you never see me, etc. but I've got a big beard, etc. Would you mm -hmm. consider me a, a Some woman? Some women have I mean, beards. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I mean, why not? What's the cost to me? What's the cost to me? I can see you as a woman if I if like if 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 it suits if, if you if it suits you if that's what you want and it doesn't take anything away from me, what is the point of me resisting but, that? I mean, how would you apply this in, in in reality? So, for example, would someone who has transitioned from a woman in uh, sorry from a man into a woman as an adult, would you allow them, for example, to compete in sports with women? No, I think sports shouldn't be based on gender. Um, I think sports should be. I mean, okay, so I think sports should be eventually turned into categories based on I don't know height, weight, bone density, your hormone levels, stuff like that. Because the whole okay, the whole point of making uh, sports in based on two genders is because we want it to be uh, competitively fair. Okay, uh, and I think like given that we are becoming more um, accepting of different gender expressions and gender identities and um, that it would have made se sense that sports if a sports was based on sex maybe it would have made sense but now because based on gender it doesn't make sense anymore okay because it's not going to it's not going to be fairly uh, cutting um cutting people into groups that would make the competition fair since we made this since originally it was always based on gender it was never based on, based on sex right so, so back, yeah mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I completely agree with you on that, Armin, because it, even if even under gender, it's still unequal based on race. So, for example, if you look at uh, sprinting, because West Af people of West African origin have higher f uh, or more fast twitch muscle fibers, they tend to be significantly faster than any other ethnic group, right? Okay. And so if you look at 100 meter races or sprint races, it seems to be dominated by w a people of one specific ethnic group. So do we now... Uh, if we're trying to be fair, should we um, do sprint races by ethnicity? We we could split. You know, you can keep well, going down. That, that. Not yeah. uh, Olympics that is... shouldn't be fair. Like the whole point of Olympics is to see who's the best of the best. The whole premise of the to, Olympics is no, 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 no. To, to certain ex yes and no, Gage in America. Okay, because if it was only if it was only based on uh, if, if fairness didn't matter at all, we wouldn't be categorizing it into male and female. Would it be? Uh, so, so, to uh, some extent, so that means to some extent, we wanted to make it fair, or else we would make, make it all one category, and men and women would be competing with each other. And if women lost all the time, we would be like, well, tough luck, we're just looking for the best. So we did at some point decided to make it a little bit more fair. So they had to ban chromosome testing back in I don't know I think it was no, but the at least, but do you accept yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah, I'm I saying like, yeah, I understand. It's not old, it's not like hey, it's not supposed to be fair. We're looking for the best. The fact that we have two groups means that some fairness was introduced to the system. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Um, I, I was going to say that um, back in the day that they banned chromosome testing because a lot of women found out cisgendered women who were born women and real and thought that they were quote unquote pure women throughout their entire lives had like a Y chromosome or had a different types of chromosome variability that wasn't the standard XX. Yeah. Okay. But my point. Okay. So that's but that's separate from the point here, right? Because if we can agree that we could sep we have separate. So here's the thing. It doesn't make sense to separate it by sex. So okay. So we sep because we don't want it. We didn't want to go check everyone's chromosomes. So we separate it by gender. Okay. But now that gender does is not a good way to make things fair because we have different forms of, you know, people with expressions of. Um, 
you know, people who I see with the female gender identity, they might have all the advantages of a male sex based on what we're uh, what the, the new norms right now. Okay. So gender is not a good way to divide people anymore to make this more fair. Okay. So we have to, if we want to make, if we want to introduce some level of, so we can't remove all level of fairness because now we have to mix men and women together if we wanted to, and that will make like women's sports completely eradicated. Right. Uh, so if we want to keep, maintaining a categorization of fairness, some level of categorization of fairness. It can be sex, it can be gender. So why don't we do something else? So why don't we do, I don't know, just like we do with um, UFC, when we have body weight, we could do body weight and two other factors. We could say three factors are the only measuring tools. Testosterone and we could have, levels. Yeah, we could have five categories based on testosterone levels, uh, but testosterone falls into racial groups. So some racial ethnic groups have higher testosterone levels than other ethnic groups. And so what you're going to have is you'll have all black people in one race, oh. all white people in another race. You'll have all East Asian. So you're just basically doing it by race, essentially, anyway. So no, you're not, you know. Okay, so, yeah, but you could say that about gender as well. But the thing is that it wouldn't be, we wouldn't just guess based on your ethnicity, okay? We would guess based on your hormone levels. Uh, we will use your hormone levels, and if it happens to be so aligned with ethnicity, so be it. But we didn't use your ethnicity. So, for example, hormone levels also would be so much in line, okay, a lot in line with sex, right? But it's the horm But in some odd cases, it wouldn't be. Some, you, you know, but it would I be. Think, a I think body level. weight. I think body weight is a far better uh, thingy than than testosterone levels. I don't know. Because... Okay, here's the thing. We we I'm not saying we should decide right now. Okay, I'm just saying like we could have four markers. Okay, four or five markers to divide people into five categories. It would not be their ethnicities because ethnicities would be a guess and it would sometimes be wrong. Okay, it would not be gender or sex because those will also be wrong sometimes. But we'll actually go to the metrics that directly impact your the things that in, changes your performance and it's not because of your uh, own practices like so we want to reward people who have done the most not people who have been the luckiest right people yeah i completely agree i completely agree yeah. with you on that however the thing is so for say for example sprinting we do it by uh, the number of fast twitch muscle fibers you have then it's likely that the person who has the most fast twitch muscle fibers is going to win the race anyway so we already know who's kind of i mean obviously you have to take into yeah. account training etc and whatnot but it's more likely that the person with the most fast twitch muscle fibers in their legs is going to depends. win a race okay than, yeah. it depends on the sport it depends on the sport and it depends on oh somebody left it depends on the sport um and again, there are, I'm pretty sure there's four metrics that makes most of the difference and the other metrics, other things, biological metrics make like the rest of the 20. So I think like you could focus on the top three or the top four and the rest of them, like well, whatever, you got lucky, okay? It's, I don't know what it is. I think we could just talk to the experts. Yeah, go on. Um, we can get too focused on I guess genetics and racial and ethnic groups because it sounds kind of gross. Um, the other part is Michael Phelps had a genetic advantage in producing half the amount of lactic acid as the average person. Like, w are we going to start regulating certain no, alleles? That's what at I'm certain saying. Point? That's like, what we I'm can't saying. do that. Like, that's okay, yeah, I know so that that is what you're saying, and I'm just providing another example because that's like I'm really saying. Up. Okay, so. It, I already answered that. Yeah. We're not going to control for everything. Yeah, so I know. There will be some, there will be some element of... Okay, yeah. So there will be some element of luck, okay? But the major things that as, as that you got because you were lucky by birth or because you injected something in yourself, like testosterone and so, so in yourself, and it wasn't because of your training. It wasn't because you trained well, okay? We will eliminate those the main top the top three or top four okay so that is mostly because of your training okay like a lot of it become because of your training okay but there are certain things that we're not going to control for and those will still be part of the luck sports okay we people want some luck to also be involved they don't want everything to be because you trained hard okay they want to be like oh you're a superior you you are like a specimen like you're like you're like a, you're special 
okay? They want to root for that as well, okay? So we will allow for some of that as well, okay? But the main ones will take that out of take that out so to make it somewhat fair, okay? So it could be bone density, I don't know, fa fast muscle, uh, fa fast twitch muscles, okay? And body weight and testosterone levels. It could be just four, okay? Everything else, if you have a genetical advantage, well, okay, fine. You could win because of that. We're not going to control for that because um, you got lucky, okay? So, but these four we will control for. I think that we could have five categories and people will be assigned to group A, B, C, D, or F um, um, and accordingly. That's, I think that's the best answer. So I definitely agree with that. Um, I just find it a bit hypocritical that a lot of the conversations we have about this is about, oh, trans women are beating cis women in sports. That's terrible. But we don't talk about the pay discrepancies that um, female athletes get compared to their male counterparts. And we also don't well, they talk should about... be. Wait, hmm? no, wait, they should get paid less. I'm in favor of them getting paid less. Is that bad? <laughs> I mean, how much less are we talking about? A lot less. It's a fraction. <laughs> No, they should get paid like so much less than men. Why? Because they used to. They... The... What? <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just making a sake comment. Sorry, sorry. Like Go ahead. Going? No, because they're less. They bring less customers. What do you want me to do? Pay them more for less of a revenue? I mean, it kind of sounds like um, trans women are shooting themselves in the foot by transitioning and getting a huge pay cut. No, no, no. Because you could get more money from uh, being the top of... So you're talking about the averages? Because if you are like an a low performing on men's sport, you're making less than if you're the top of the women's sport. So on aver are you talking about averages? Because, or you're talking about individuals? Well, average is women should be getting a lot less than men uh, because less people watch women's sport. Why should they get paid more for less of an out? We want equal opportunity. We don't want the equal outcome. If you're not bringing in the views, why should you get paid? Like you were, the, your entire industry is making less money. Fuck the industry. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I mean, do you know what I want to see? I want to see men fighting women in the UFC. That would be... Uh, Epic for entertainment value purposes. What do you think? I, well, that's abusive. I don't know. <laughs> well, there was this. There was this one trans woman, um, an African American. Uh, not that that matters, but uh, uh, you might know who she is. Um, but uh, she transitioned into a female and then started fighting in the UFC. So she transitioned as an adult in her twenties. And she was beating the living daylights out of uh, all of her opponents. But then once she came up against someone who was technically proficient. She got destroyed, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I think that goes to show that the technical aspect of sports is just as important or might be as important as strength, et cetera, bone density and whatnot. Um, and I think that uh, that's a great illustration as to how you can have someone who is a, a man who has transitioned into a woman um, and then still not be able to compete at the highest level against women who are basically technically proficient at the sport yeah i don't um you're going um i don't think that it could be divorced from the fact that um sh so she's a black woman sorry sorry a black trans woman who beat the living daylights out of a bunch of i'm assuming white cis women is that is that what was happening at first uh, it was a mixture of Hispanic and, and white, but some Hispanics are considered white these days. So in America. Okay. So um, okay. Sorry, my SJW Mujahideen um, <laughs> training is kind of kicking in a little bit because um, payback. <laughs> no, because um, when I was in college, it was kind of pointed out to me a lot of times how uh, black women are defeminized and made overly masculine and how black men are seen as aggressive and are after your women. And this story is kind of just I'm not saying the story was like, you know, played into it. I'm just saying that it has echoes of that, like we don't get to see um, tran 
um, white trans women going to the field and getting their asses beat uh, by other cis women. Those stories don't make it to the headlines. It's always the um, ex one exceptional trans woman that like they all only report the stories of um, one trans woman beating the cis woman and then not the other way around. That's true. I, I do agree with you on that. And it was Joe Rogan who was pushing this narrative. So this, uh, in this oh. instance, that story got out to millions upon millions of people. Um, and that person was lambasted. And I think from then on, they've banned trans women from competing in women's contests within the uh, UFC. So so Joe Rogan, the impact of him uh, dis you know, having that on his show has had a real impact on, on, on trans people within the sport. By the way, guys, I really do think that trans uh, women in sports is such a uh, small thing compared to trans rights as a whole. Okay, and I yeah, think definitely. that uh, I think this is just a tool used by. Like, it's an interesting discussion for to talk about bio biology, gender, sex. It's an interesting discussion, but we have to be careful not to fall into what this discussion is truly about. This is uh, like a very, very few number of people's um, lives and the inconsistency in rules being highlighted to determine the you know the the true gender identity of a much much larger number of people like obviously when you're going through such a major shift in mindset through society there's going to be odd cases where things are not going to make sense okay and sports happens to be the thing here uh, but highlighting that is giving people the impression that the whole thing is a lost cause and it's ridiculous as a whole okay and that's the reason i mean you shouldn't be expecting anything else like obviously there's going to be we're going through a completely shift in perspective on something that we could we understood in society obviously there will you shouldn't expect not there to be odd cases okay but fixating on that as the expense of what the discussion truly is about is like what something that right-leaning uh, you know, far you know, right-leaning bigots are trying to do. So don't let them win this. Yeah, and 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 if you compare it to 15 years ago, there were, trans rights were non-existent. People knew nothing about trans people, almost nothing about trans people. Uh, and you see how far we've progressed since then. I think it's unbelievable. You know, like even gay marriage, 15 years ago, like. 20 years ago, people weren't even talking about it. So, and, and we've seen how far, that, that's considered the norm now. Even Barack Obama was against gay marriage when he was elected to power. Now, even the um, uh, the Republicans, majority, well, large proportion of them are supportive of gay marriage. So we can see the shift um, in perspective from uh, ordinary people in terms of gay rights, first of all, and, and also I think in terms of trans rights, although there's the pushback in recent last, say, two years, especially in the UK where the TERF community seems to have a big voice, um, there seems to be a pushback against the trans, uh, the trans community. But I think uh, in the end, we will overcome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if this, uh, if we have to go through some women who deserve to be for if a handful of women who deserve to be first place and are not first place now because of this, if we have to pay that price for the whole issue of people who the a large number of people who are suffering through gender dysphoria to be accepted through, to be accepted through society, if that's the periodic price that we have to pay. I think like society should pay that price. I mean, I, I rather care about uh, the oppression, discrimination, and sometimes violence against all the transgenders in the world than worrying about, I don't know, how many people that were first place. And I mean, I'm sorry, okay? It, it was unfair to you, okay? But again, this is a much smaller price that we have to pay. I agree. Um, it's way more it's way better for to incorporate them into members of the economy and increase our tax base. Well, that's oh my god, Asian American, you are like that, <laughs> that is how you sell more... it to Republicans. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> like, like I'm talking about human rights, and like yes, they're productive members of their like economy. They're like, yeah. <laughs> like, Roman, yeah, this what? is how you sell it to American Republicans. Okay. 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 Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. 
We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.